Hello everyone, Alexander from City Gazing here. And today I'm at the park slope. I'm starting here at the edge of the park slope near the Barclays Center. That's the place where you can watch games, concerts and other events. As you can see there are a lot of couriers here. Oops, sorry. And because right behind me is the huge transportation hub, you'll see a ton of people here. There is subway stations, there is Long Island Railroad Station. As always, I'll walk today and we'll tell you some facts about the neighborhood and we'll comment on the things I see. Today is February 23rd, it's 4 p.m., it's Friday, so it should, should be busy pretty soon with all the people. colors you will not see them that often in new buildings park slope is very old and beautiful neighborhood and when i will be near the places I want to tell you facts about I'll tell you more of the story of this neighborhood until then I'll be just commenting on what I see some dresses there Today is a great day, we had no rain, but it was clouds for the whole day. They expire. Or they don't expire. They just... As you can see, not a lot of high rises here. There is a shop on the other side of the street called Donut Plant. I never been there. I might grab some donuts from there after this recording.
you can see some buildings are closed for good. I don't know the reason in behind, but this, this neighborhood feels like the one that should be developing all the time. But for some reason, some buildings are closed. I don't know, maybe the rent was too high or some other reasons, but it doesn't feel right. Very soon we will turn to the 7th Avenue and I will show you where was the site of one of the America's deadliest plane crashes. On December 16, 1960, one day before the 57th anniversary of the Wright brothers' first flight, a deadly mid-flight plane crash sent shockwaves throughout the Park Slow community. As eyewitnesses and radar reports suggest, Two planes, a United Airlines DC-8 bound for Idlewild Airport and TWA Super Constellation descending into LaGuardia Airport collided in midair over Staten Island. Following the collision, TWA plane crashed into Miller Field on the southeastern coast of Staten Island. That's where New Dorp High School now stands. However, the DC-8 took a different path, crashing in Park Slope at Serlin Place near the intersection of 7th Avenue. Wrecking havoc on the surrounding area, 10 brownstones, a funeral home, a deli and a laundromat were all set aflame. The pillar of fire church was also completely destroyed. As the deadliest aviation disaster in the world at that time, the crash killed all 128 passengers aboard both planes, as well as six people on the ground. Miraculously, 18, sorry, 11-year-old Stephen Lambert Bolt from Illinois briefly survived the crash after being thrown out of the plane onto a snowbank. Unfortunately, he passed from pneumonia the following day. I'm almost at the place that I wanted to show you. We'll be there in 30 seconds. Meanwhile, you can look at all these beautiful buildings on both sides of the street. So the address I'm looking for is Storlin Place 126.
and let me see. I think I've just passed it through. One through three, one to one. Okay, it's on the other side. So, remnants of the carnage can still be found scattered across this neighborhood. And at this one to six Sterling place, the different brickwork across its, its top portion and missing black carnage highlight the building's remodel following the crash. In addition to patched brick columns, the most striking passages of the crash lay in the backyard of sculptor Steve Keltner, taken from the church before it was cleared out. Keltner has two large metal pieces from the plane, one of which appears to have come from the gasket of the plane, labeled number five, main tank, auxiliary fuel, structural limit 17,605 pounds. While there is no official plaque for the plane crash at Sterling Place, the historic event has been commemorated elsewhere in Brooklyn. In 2010, the Greenwood Cemetery erected a memorial for the victims of the plane crash in a lot purchased by United Airlines for burying the undefined remains. So that was the first story about this neighborhood. And we will head over to the other one. I'm sorry that I was not able to locate that house right away. I haven't been to this house myself, so this is my first time. I've been to this neighborhood a couple times. I went to Prospect Park. I'll show it to you too today. But I didn't know a lot of stories about this neighborhood, so I'm learning with you. This neighborhood reminds me of Brooklyn Heights neighborhood. You have seen my video about Brooklyn Heights. Take a look. I hope you are enjoying the architecture here. It's old and beautiful. And you see these stairs. Almost every house has stairs. And they got an apartment downstairs too. So how it worked one time ago, because there were horse carriages here and there was like a ton of horse poo on the streets and people who were main in the house they were living upstairs and their servants they lived on the bottom floor They just didn't want to have that smell and they didn't care about people who saw them. Another 
house with wood boards. I hope they are just renovating in a weird way. I'm sorry for being silent, I'm just looking at all these buildings, just trying to get all the details with my eyes and trying to show you all of that too. Look at the top floor there, very beautiful. St. John's Park Slope the name of this church. A lot of churches and or cathedrals here. Look at this cute dog. I love the style of these balconies that are kind of out of the house. You can see moss on the walls, on the porches. And here you can see the part of it is gone. I don't know if you can see plane there. Now after that story, I'm a little bit afraid. I know that it's much more secure now. But anyway, that's how my brain works. The architecture is fascinating, really. I'm just looking at all these houses.
the place we are going to is called Montauk Club. And it's a vibrant private social club that has been an integral part of the Park Slope community. Members of the club frequently organize a series of exclusive events, including talks by local artists, live jazz performances, dinner operas, and monthly book, beer, and wine clubs. Over the years, the club has been the set for television shows like Billions, Boardwalk Empire, and The Knicks. Moreover, many notable people have graced its halls, including John Kennedy, Dwight Eisenhower, Grover Cleveland, and William McKinley, all of whom gave speeches. I'll go to the other side of the street to show it to you properly. So, here is the billion. I'll show it to you from this side too. In 1996, the club's basement, third floors, and attic stories were converted into a condominiums, with the residents entering through the original ladies' entrance to the left of the main doors. Today, the Vantag Club remains usage of the parlor and second floor, with a breathtaking balcony overlooking the green canopy of Prospect Park. And Prospect Park is a place where we'll be heading now. You can see another plane. A lot of air traffic here. And here to my left, you can see all the greens. That's the Grand Army Plaza right there. construction everywhere, but you're not surprised by that, right? So that's an entrance to the dentistry. Looks very beautiful. <laughs> I would not assume that there is dentistry there.
you can see right there there is a reconstruction of the arch in the middle of the Grand Army Plaza. And here you can see the entrance to the Prospect Park. We will not be heading there just yet. And we will not be heading too deep into the park even later. But just wanted to show you the entrance. It reminds me of Central Park. And I think that's the second biggest park after Central Park in New York City. At least that's my second favorite park for sure. You can see some tall houses here, but they're not like Manhattan tall. I will turn to the right here as you'll see something beautiful on both sides. Park is not that exciting during the winter so I might shoot another video when it will be green because there are some facts that I can tell about the park too. Well, hello here dog is right there oh that's a Vespa These are gas lamps. It's not just a regular light bulb. <laughs> there is a really old TV right there.
another gorgeous building at the corner of two streets. Everyone is honking and you are not surprised by that too. But today you really wanted it, I know. You can see this part of the neighborhood has taller buildings, not just regular two, three floors, but more. So we need to go to the second street and turn left. And then I told her. And the place I want to show you is where Barack Obama once lived. So this is the first street and we'll turn left on the next block. Before moving to Chicago, the city which would help launch his political career, former US President Barack Obama resided in the heart of Park Slope. From December 1984 to March 1985, Obama lived in a townhouse located at 640 2nd Street. Built sometime between 1901 and 1903, the townhouse is a classic three-story brownstone, beautifully adorned with bowed windows. After quitting his first job at the Business International Corporation in December 1984, Following his graduation from Columbia University, Obama moved into the townhouse with, with his then Australian girlfriend, Genevieve Cook, who was renting the top floor apartment from a colleague. Having met him at a Christmas party in the East Village in 1983, Cook spent her days teaching second and third graders at the Brooklyn France School. During his time living with Cook, Obama began working for the nonprofit New York Public Interest Group, giving him his first taste of large scale community organizing. And here is the street. You can see that all the houses almost have the same style. Same goes for the other side of the street. Now, now I need to find 640 house from the first try.
And in the meantime, if you are still watching at this moment, I hope then you like my video then. So please hit that subscribe button. I will appreciate that. And that's the only thing I will ask from you. So this is the house. And as you can see, not a lot of tourists here. I'll come a little bit closer just to show you how it looks like. Though he meant to stay temporarily in the townhouse, he remained until Cook decided to move by herself to another apartment on Warren Street. In March 1985, with Obama renting his own separate place in Hell's Kitchen. As explained by David Marinis in his book Barack Obama, the story their time living together did not go well and the two would break up in May 1985. A few months later Obama would move to Chicago beginning a new job with the developing communities project. In 1994 the townhouse would undergo major renovations and would be converted into a single family residence. Some of what remains the same in the brownstone includes an original china cabinet, stained glass windows, in the double parlor, carved wood wainscoting, and a little ingle nook on the third floor. And popular as ever, the asking price for the historic home in 2017 was $4.2 million. Now we'll be heading just a little bit here to the Prospect Park. The place I want to show you is Litchfield Villa and it's one of the Park Slope's oldest landmarks. Litchfield Villa predates the construction of Prospect Park, which was completed in 1867. As a result, original plans for the park were made to work around the villa, giving it its current forest backdrop. In 1869, the Litchfield family ceded the 50 acres of land used for Litchfield Villa to the city of Brooklyn, which bought the plot for $1.7 million. I'll come closer in a second. However, the city allowed for the family to lease the property and Litchfield 
his wife Grace Hill Hubbard, who inspired the villa's nickname Grace Hill, and their five children continued to live in the mansion. Eventually, so heartbroken following the death of Grace in 1881, Litchfield would leave the villa, releasing it solely into the hands of Brooklyn Parks Commission, which began using the space as its headquarters in 1883. So from 1883 onwards, this is just a Brooklyn Parks Commission building. This looks very cool. And we are going to another old historical landmark of Park Slope. I wanted to say sorry about the length of the video. It's just almost impossible to make it shorter if I'm not editing it. I hope that you, you are still enjoying all the buildings in between the facts. You can hear how quiet it is and it's just like we are half a block away from the one of the main roads. Oh wow, they got two cameras there, not just one. That's fail proof, for sure. I wish I could comment on every building here. Everything looks so interesting.
I'm trying not to talk when there are people around, just not to make them uncomfortable. I'm not trying to film them. I wanted to show you two more places, but based on my pace and that it's already 47 minutes, I may show you only the last one. Not to make this video overly big. Okay, let me go out of here, because that's a long scaffolding. I don't want to be there. I want to see the sky. I can see way back nice little light of yellow and orange. So it must be Really good sunset today. There was a store once. It looks like closed. I don't think that they're just opening it. Wellness by someone you can see how different buildings are but they're they were trying to keep the same style for the same street. All the different shades of brown and orange. And again, gas lamps. You can see where the style changes. And another portion of the same style townhouses
Park Slope Ale House. My wild guess they serve ale there. I like the roof here. A few days ago I was live streaming for the first time and it didn't went really well because after one hour the camera I'm using it started to do this strange buffering thing and video became choppy so I ended the stream but if you want you can take a look first hour is definitely watchable and I really enjoy this new format for me We are almost there, just a block and a half away. This is middle school. And the final place for today will be the old stone house. This house played a crucial role during the Battle of Brooklyn. I will show it to you in a minute. Since the late 17th century, the old stone house has played many important roles within the Park Slope community. Listed as part of the Historic House Trust of New York City and the National Register of Historic Places, the old stone house currently serves as a conservancy organization for Washington Park. The organization has ever seen more than 9.5 million dollars in park renovations and works to produce educational programming for 7,000 students. In addition, the Old Stone House serves as a space for over 200 individual artists and family events each year. The Old Stone House of today is a 1993 reconstruction of the Wachte Kartilow house, which was destroyed in 
1897. The original Dutch colonial farmhouse was built in 1699 on land taken from the Lenape people as early as 1639 by Klaas Arendsen Wechte, a wealthy carpenter, farmer and wheelwright. So oh, that's how it looks today. And it says that museum is closed for a private event. And owning the surrounding lands, the Vechte family often harvested oysters in Galanus Canal ferrying them for sale in Lower Manhattan. Let me see if I can go to the other side. They got restaurants in here. Oh yeah, nice. I can film it from here too. I haven't been here myself. In 1776, the house would serve as the culminating location in the Battle of Long Island, also known as the Battle of Brooklyn, the first major military engagement after the signing of the Declaration of Independence, and the largest battle of the American Revolution. On the morning of August 27th, as British troops approached the main American camp in Brooklyn Heights, American General William Ale William Alexander Lord Sterling realized that the precarious predicament in his army was in. To push the British back, Sterling led a regiment of 400 Maryland soldiers against 2,000 British troops under the command of General Charles Cornwallis, stationed at the Old Stone House. Though two separate attempts were made, Sterling's army surrendered in the end. With the loss, the British army went to occupy Brooklyn and Manhattan for the next seven years. Though they failed to stop General George Washington, and which would be decisive in leading to the colonists' ultimate victory. And today, the Olson House has been converted into an ongoing memorial to the Battle of Brooklyn. And as you can see, it's just a part of the playground now. You could not tell that some 200, 300 years ago, there was a battle here. The last place I wanted to show to you would be the New York State Militia. So basically that was an armory and I'll tell you about that a little later, maybe in the next video, because I will not have time to do that today. But that would be a great reason to come back here and shoot another one. I will walk a few more blocks here to the subway station and I'll show you how the Fifth Avenue looks like here.
you can see a lot of businesses here, shops, restaurants, bars. This is a good ice cream shop. But Hagen Das is better, that's my opinion. But that's a good one too. I love the name of that sushi restaurant, J Pen. And sorry about the accent, I'm trying to do my best and I'm putting subtitles for every video. So if you have trouble hearing what I'm saying or understanding me, just turn on those subtitles and it's, it's better if you'll turn them on. You'll understand me better. I just remembered that I wanted to go to that donut shop, but next time. I'll be turning left at the next intersection and that would be my last block for today. Oh, I like the wheels on this BMW. I just seen a barber shop and it says that haircut is thirty dollars and that's cheap for New York. How much is haircut in your city? Let me know in the comments if you want. You see we are on the street again and it's much quieter than the avenue.
you see the entrances for these apartments are not that high so my assumption would be that it was built after those buildings where you have an entrance to the main building on the second floor Yeah, you can tell that the brick is newer. Or it might just look newer to me. Alright, this is it for today. Thanks for watching, click subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.